hey, let's draw the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is super ancient. It's thousands of years old. Uh, it was first built in the 7th century BC, and uh, then in the 14th century AD, it was rebuilt by the Ming Dynasty to try to stop the Mongols. Uh, some of you may be familiar with some of that from Mulan. Uh, anyways, it was built on all these rolling hills, and that's what makes it look so cool, is the way that it rolls over them like a snake. So we got to start with the hills, which I'm doing right now follow along with me every once in a while I might uh, give a hint or a tip or explain what I'm doing if it's hard to see otherwise let's just listen to some cool music and uh, draw away And there we go, we've got all of our rolling hills set up there. As you can see, it just looks like a bunch of lumps. But now we're going to start putting our great wall over it. We're going to start by drawing some of the watchtowers. And then the watchtowers are linked by walkways. Uh, we'll have more detail in the foreground or front of the picture than the back. Um, but we're gonna try to keep the same perspective for all of these watchtowers. They're all kind of pointed the same directions, which is neat. At least uh, the picture that I looked at for reference, they were all pointed kind of the same direction, um, which is neat because we can use the same perspective for all of them. All of their square walls are at the same angles. Okay, there's our first watchtower. Now I'm gonna draw these sloping lines that represent where the actual wall is going to be. Uh, and then we'll fill those in and make them more three-dimensional later. After doing these sloping lines, you'll see I start working on the next watchtower, which since it's further away than the first one we drew, it's gonna be smaller. And so on each of these hills, you'll notice that the watchtowers get smaller and the wall gets smaller as it goes away from us. middle hill we're going to have a long building a little different than the watchtowers it was a barracks where soldiers could stay when they weren't working a shift on the watchtowers so it's a long building kind of different angles and more of a rectangle than a square There we 
go. Kind of a square front. A rectangle side, but angled because of the slope of the hill. And then it's actually got a little house-shaped building on top of it as well. So as we get further back in our picture, the watchtowers that we have on these hills are going to get smaller and smaller. They look, this, this is one of the farthest hills, and that's a very tiny watchtower, but we still want to represent the same corner of that building facing us as all the rest of the corners of the buildings. Now we'll start connecting the watchtowers with the walls, with the walkways. Like I said, we're just going to start with these guidelines, so I'm doing two guidelines for each wall, even though the walls really technically have two walls and a walkway, so three sides. But we'll get to those details momentarily. For now, let's just draw these sloping, sweeping, snaking guidelines. There we go, that's starting to come together. Now, behind these hills here, the wall swoops down. That's not a hill, that's actually gonna be part of the wall. Kind of crosses that valley. And then on the other side here, we have another very, very small watchtower. There we go. Right there. Time has come for the permanent lines. A lot of these lines you have already drawn. And so if you've got a clean line on the edges of these buildings, it's not like you really have to draw over it again. I do, because I'm changing things from blue to black, so it's a lot easier to see and you can tell that I'm not gonna erase that line once I've drawn it, unless I mess something up. On the top here, you'll see I'm putting these little dashes. Those are called crenellations. They're little spots that archers could stand in and fire down at the bad guys below. Now I'm erasing this part of the building because a lot of it is gonna get covered up by the actual wall itself. This is the top of the wall that is closest to us. This wall and this uh, guardhouse, this watchtower, they're going to get the most detail because they're closest to us. So we really want to make sure that our lines are clean. 
You can see now there's a gap between those two walls. And we want to bring a line down here so we show that that wall has space between it. And there's our walkway. Now we continue that same general idea, up and away, <laughs> up, up and away, uh, from us, we're drawing in our three-dimensional walls and making sure that we have walkways where you might be able to see them. Uh, like I said, as we get further away, the details get less and less and less, and so you'll see that I stop drawing crenellations later on in the walls and in the watchtowers, just because they're so far away, it's detail that we wouldn't be able to see. Yes! Oh, I love it when the music gets soulful like that. All right, so you can see that I'm drawing in the hills now. If the lines for your hills are good, don't worry about drawing over them. But I like mine to be clean and I like it all to be black, so I'm going over them one more time.
So I think this long building is about as far back as we'll do our crenellations. And now you can see here, I'm continuing with the hills and uh, I'm about to draw this weird squiggly line. And that kind of represents this little rocky valley. It's not like these are all just smooth rolling hills. There's a lot of rocks and cliffs and we're gonna add those in so that it's not just the wall on top of some lumps. Gives it a little bit more depth that way. I may have fibbed earlier, this wall is just too big not to do crenellation lines on. Wonderful work, the great wall has been built, but we are not finished yet. Now we're gonna start on some cliff work. You do a wiggly line on the top and that kind of represents the edge of the cliff and then we do vertical lines that represent the grooves and striations of the cliff underneath the top and edge of it. Now once we've got some of those vertical lines done, we're going to draw some rubble underneath the cliff. Obviously the cliff at one time was a whole part of the hill, and it had to erode and crumble, and so we need to see some remnants of those crumblings. I believe that some of this rock, or some of these cliffs, were also kind of quarried to build some of the wall as well, but there would definitely be rubble underneath. And you can see how I put some larger rocks in that valley that we started a lot earlier. So I'm going to do cliffs on a couple of these hills but it's the same general process as that first cliff.
we got some cliffs drawn in. Now we're going to do kind of a big rock. Uh, instead of a cliff, it's going to be some rock sticking out from the hill. Just to give things a little more variety and a little bit more depth. Alright, now that we've got this thing a cliffin' and a rockin', it's time to add some details into our great wall. Like I said, as we go further away from the foreground, there's going to be less details for us to deal with, but especially up at the front here, we want to make sure that we've got all of our grooves and our windows and our doorways all shown. Wherever the walls meet the watchtowers, there's going to be doorways, and they're usually just two large arches. And then I just fill them in with black because it's all shadowy in there, we wouldn't see inside very well anyways, so I just color them in. I think it's about time we start on some windows. The windows are arches just like the doorways, but they're much shorter. Generally three of them to a side, except on the long building I think there'll be four. <clears throat> Once again we just draw the arch, color it in, done. And then all these windows also have a line underneath them too. Don't forget, when we're on this house-shaped building, on the rooftop, uh, all the corners kind of curve out uh, with a little bit of a flare, so you want to make sure to get those in there. So technically, you could stop right here if you wanted to. You could say this is a great picture of the Great Wall and I'm doing great and I'm done. But you know me, I always like to put a little more, bit more detail into things. 
So one thing I noticed about my reference picture is the hills are covered in shrubs and scrub bushes and things like that. They're not so smooth as we have them now. So I'm gonna redraw the hills a little bit more wiggly to uh, infer that they got scrub bushes all over them. While I'm making these hills scrubby, I'm also going to uh, elevate the detail of the valley that we started much earlier. I'm going to add some more rocks in there and kind of add a little bit more perspective by making rocks in the foreground and rocks in the background of the valley. So, what is the Great Wall made out of? Bricks! That's right, bricks. We need to show that this thing is made out of bricks, and we're going to do it the same way that we did the scales on the dragon uh, in the last video. We're going to just draw some bricks, but not all of them, to suggest to the person looking at the picture that everything is brick, without making it too busy with all these brick lines and making our fingers sore in the process of drawing all of them too. What we want to do is horizontal lines to make a stack of bricks and then when you draw your vertical lines make sure that they're offset. You don't want all the vertical lines to go the same way. Uh, you want one vertical line in one horizontal row and then move it over and draw a vertical line in the other horizontal row so that they're offset, they stagger, and that way it looks like bricks stacked together. Now, as I mentioned before, as we get further back in our picture, there's less and less detail. And so eventually I stop doing the vertical lines of the bricks all together and just do some horizontal lines to represent that there is some texture there. I'm also not very happy with that middle wall that leads to the guardhouse, to the barracks. I think I'm gonna have to erase and redo that middle wall. It just looks a little bit funky to me. Hmm. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to keep bricking it up.
All right, now that we've got our wall all bricked up, as you can see, sometimes just horizontal lines, sometimes whole stacks of bricks. I am gonna fix this middle wall here. I'm, I'm not very happy with it. Just a little bit sloppy and I wanna clean it up some. So I'm just gonna try to, with my big markers, make some of these lines smaller and uh, give the wall more space to be three-dimensional. Okay, after uh, watching the awesome Spider-Man shirt that I'm wearing for a long time, you can see that I have redone that wall, made it just a little bit cleaner. If your wall was good from the get-go, you can totally skip that step. And finally, I just can't leave a sky untouched. I've got to put some clouds in it. But once we've got these clouds done, you've got a beautiful, beautiful representation of the Great Wall of China. And there we go. That's it, the Great Wall of China. I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed drawing along with me as always, and I look forward to drawing with you again next time. Peace.